And now for the radio program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program. The mystery program that's unique among all mystery programs. And I'll tell you why. It's because you know who's guilty. You see his every move. You know his complete plans, even his innermost thoughts. Yet the final curtain always brings a startling surprise. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's the whistler for the tops in entertainment. And for the tops in gasoline quality, it's signal. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly independent signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story, Lady from the Sea. For 15 years, Myra Cartwright had lived in a shadow, the shadow of a knife and a note. A note that could destroy everything she'd built up in 15 years of hard work. Yes, a shadow that even the glittering lights of Hollywood could not dispel. Myra had now reached the peak of her fame. The light of her stardom was burning brightly. Her houses in Bel Air and Palm Springs were showplaces. And her face was on the cover of four magazines this month. Then, something in the morning paper struck terror to her heart. And at the same instant, a cloud crossed before the sun. Myra shivered. The newspaper slipped from her fingers to the bedroom floor. Ella. Ella. Miss Myra. What's the matter? I... Oh, you look like you've seen a ghost. I have, I have. What's that, Miss Myra? The newspaper, look. Look at it. Piper. There on the front page. The picture. What? Why, it's a picture of Paradise Pier. And the... The old cafe built like a ship. The lady from the sea. They're tearing down the pier, Ella. They're going to destroy the lady from the sea. Memory-haunted landmarks of early film colony days fast disappearing. The furnishings of the famous old lady from the sea cafe, a favorite mating place of the silent film era, will go on the auction block today. According to an announcement... Ella! Call the studio. Tell them I won't be there today. But what'll I tell? Tell them anything. I'm sick. Anything. I don't care. I've got to go to that auction. Yes, the dismantling of an old cafe built like a ship had a strange significance in the life of Myra Cartwright. To her, the lady from the sea cafe meant more than memories of plushy Hollywood parties and prohibition gyms. It stood for Craig Douglas, the one-time Hollywood director who once owned it. It stood for Craig's beautiful wife, Norma Douglas, star of the silent film. And above all, it brought back memories of that evening 15 years ago when Myra, then a farm girl from Montana, radiant after her first important screen role in Marie Dressler's latest picture, had stood beside Craig on the upper deck of the Lady from the Sea Cafe, overlooking the churning waters that moved under Paradise Pier. Craig. Yes, darling. Craig, did you talk to Norma? Yes. The answer's still the same. She won't consent to a divorce. Craig, I've been thinking. You could force her into a divorce. What? I mean, if it were known about us, she'd have to. No, no. I won't have that, Myra. She'd drag your name through the mud and take pleasure doing it. But, darling, I... No, Myra. No, you, 
You're young, on the threshold of a great career. Bad publicity would ruin you. I don't care about my career. I don't care about anything but you. Oh, darling. Oh, Craig, what are we going to do? Very little, I'm afraid. Myra. Yes? You remember the Ibsen play we read together? The one you named the cafe for, The Lady from the Sea? Uh-huh. He took from his pocket a key ring. And drew a ring that he always wore from his finger. And he took a small ring that I had. These two he put on the key ring. And he said, we should wed ourselves to the sea. Wed? Yes, so he said. And with that he threw the key ring and our rings with all his might, as far as he could, into the deep. Myra, give me your ring. Here. And now mine. Yours and mine on the key ring. There. Craig, darling. Do you remember the rest of the lines? For... For she is mine. And mine she will remain. And she shall follow me if I should come back and fetch her as a drowned man. From the dark sea. Oh, Craig. Craig. Well, here we are, my darling. You got your key? Uh huh. Would you come in for a few minutes, Craig? No, I'd better not. It's past midnight, and you've got to be on the set early in the morning. All right. I... Well... What's the matter? That's strange. The lights are... I'm sure I turned them out when I left the apartment tonight. Hello, darling. What? Norma. Your landlady told me it would be quite all right if I waited for you here, Myra. I uh, told her I was a friend. You don't mind, do you? Norma, what are you doing here? Oh, I just wanted to drop around and have a little talk with your protege. What do you want? I don't want anything, Craig. I uh, understood you wanted a divorce. This is hardly the place to discuss that again. There won't be any discussion, Craig. I've made up my mind to give you a divorce. What? what? Oh, Norma. Why not? There's nothing left between us. I was a fool to think otherwise, so... Well, you two can make your plans. Oh, Norma, I... I don't know what to say. Then don't say anything, darling. Well, it, it's awfully decent of him. I only want you to be happy. I... I want you to know, Nona. I'm grateful to you for giving Craig up. I'm sure you'll be quite happy together, even with what you'll have left. What do you mean? Oh, that's right. We haven't discussed the terms of the divorce yet, have we, darling? Terms? The financial settlement. Norma, we can talk about that later. No, I want to discuss it right now. I want Myra to know what she's costing you, Craig. No, no, I, I don't understand. Craig what can I'm... have his divorce, Myra, provided he gives me the Malibu house, the ranch, the cafe, cars, and everything else he owns. Well, you can't be serious. Oh, but I am. And another thing, I'm afraid you'll have to leave the studio. The place is cluttered with second-rate directors, as it is. Second-rate? It's all you ever were, Craig, and you're not even that anymore. You're a has-been. You'd have been out of a job long ago if it hadn't been for me. And if you go through with this, I'll see to it that you're finished in Hollywood. I think I'm big enough to do it. Yes, I expect you are. Uh... Norma, you can't ask Craig to do this. I I won't let him. I won't have it this way. You mean you won't have Craig this way? Money really is important, isn't it, Myra? Without it, Craig has lost his appeal, hasn't he, darling? It was just a trick, wasn't it, Norma? You never intended to divorce Craig. <laughs> I'm grateful to you for giving Craig up. You just want to torture us. <laughs> Stop it. Stop I'll it. never let you have him. Do you understand? Never, you poor, stupid little fool. <laughs> Stop it! Myra, Myra, put down that knife. No, Myra, don't! <laughs> it's all over in an instant, isn't it, Myra? The paper knife in your hand. The sudden, blind, raging lunge at Norma. And now she lies on the floor at your feet. Then you feel Craig's arm around you. Myra, give me the knife. She, she laughed at me. Give me the knife. She's dead. I've killed her because she laughed. Oh, 
Chris. Darling, get hold of yourself. Do you hear? I didn't mean to. I know, I know. Now listen to me. I've got to get her out of here. I want you to go downstairs, drive my car around to the back of the building and leave it there. Oh, no, Craig. I, I can't. You've got I... to. I'll take Norma down the back stairs. No one will see me. Give me about five minutes. Then I want you to come back here and stay here. And I'll phone you later. And don't worry. Leave everything to me. <laughs> Yes, Myra, leave everything to Craig. He'll know what to do. Quickly, you go downstairs, drive the car around to the rear of the building, and a few minutes later, you're back in your apartment. Craig is gone with Myra, and he's taken the murder weapon with him. A paper knife with your name engraved on the blade, part of a desk set, a gift of the studio worker. Yes, Craig will have to get rid of the knife too, won't he, Myra? The hours drag by slowly, and you pace the floor of your apartment, Waiting, waiting. But Craig doesn't call. You're almost at the breaking point when finally, just before dawn. Craig? Miss Cartwright? Uh, yes, who is this? Frank Collins. I'm Craig's lawyer. He asked me to call you. Where's Craig? At the police station. They're holding him for the murder of his... Murder? Wife. For the murder of his wife, Norma. No, he didn't do it. I tell you, they can't hold him. Afraid they can, Miss Cartwright. You see, half an hour ago, Craig signed a full confession. You may proceed, Mr. Kenton. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Douglas... You have told the court that during a quarrel with your wife at the lady from the Sea Cafe, that in a blind rage you struck her several times with a knife. Yes, yes. What became of the murder weapon? What did you do with the knife? I told you I didn't know what I was doing. I, I don't remember. You don't remember? Oh, now, really, Mr. Duncan. Your Honor, I object. The defendant has already testified that in a moment of uncontrolled rage or sudden emotion... What, Your Honor? A murder weapon is of vital importance. Objection sustained. Mr. Douglas, just what do you remember? You struck your wife several times with the knife. And then? Then she fell to the floor. Somehow I, I must have wandered outside. And after that I remember standing by the rail. And how long were you out there? I don't know. Then I came back in and called the police. That's all I remember. Here we are, miss. Five minutes and keep your hands off the screen. Yes, yes, of course. Hello, Myra. Craig. Oh, Craig. Oh, no, no, Myra, it's all right. The trial's over and that's the worst part. Darling, 15 years. If my lawyer hadn't managed to have the charge reduced to manslaughter, it might have been much worse. Craig, why? Why did you do it? Why did you confess? Because, because I love you, Myra. Because you have a career before you. Not like Norma's, based on a pretty face and a few cheap tricks. But something really great. And what if you're wrong? If I'm a failure? You'll have given up your freedom for nothing. No. No, I, I would have done it anyway. Craig? Yes? The, the, the knife, they never found the knife. Now don't worry, there's no safer place in the world than where I put it. But I've got to get it sometime. Tell me where it is. No, no, if I told you, you'd go back and they, they might be watching. But Craig... Don't worry, darling. It's safe where it is. Quite safe. With the prologue of Lady from the Sea, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. You know, friends, in addition to being summer, this is also the time of year when more and more drivers switch to Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. Of course, you can't blame vacation-minded folks for being interested in Signal's good mileage. But mileage is only half of Signal's story. If you talk with Signal customers, you'll find they're equally enthusiastic about the thing which makes Signal's good mileage possible. 
I mean the extra efficiency that today's signal gasoline coaxes from your motor, which means smoother, quieter, more responsive power for your car. After all, mileage is just one of the tangible, measurable benefits you'll enjoy from a superior quality gasoline that delivers more driving pleasure for you. That's why Signal says your speedometer is the best yardstick of gasoline quality. But for the simple way to always be sure you're choosing the gasoline that's tops in quality, you need only remember these two points. One, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now back to the whistler. And so, Myra, a shadow entered your life. The shadow of a night. A shadow that has been with you now for ten years. Ten years since Craig Douglas went to prison. Ten years since his Lady of the Sea Cafe passed into other hands. The murder of Norma Douglas, his wife, is almost forgotten. But you've never forgotten it, have you? Even when success followed success, as your fame and power grew in the motion picture world, you have remembered. For you love Craig Douglas. Yes. And he knows where the knife is hidden. Even now, as you stand on the set between takes, the whole horrible nightmare comes back to you, and you struggle to keep it out of your mind. As you turn to light a cigarette, you see your maid walking towards you. What is it, Ella? It's Mara. What's the matter? He's there, in your bungalow. Who is? Mr. Douglas. Craig. <laughs> Craig. Hello, Myra. Craig, you... Craig. Don't look so upset, Myra. It'll take a little time to get used to me. But how did you... I mean... Time off for good behavior. I'm on parole. Oh, I see. I'm so glad, Craig. You don't seem to be, Myra. But uh, of course I am. Why, why shouldn't I be glad after all? Well... Changed so, Craig. You look so different. Yes, yes. Ten years in prison can do a lot to a man. But, but inside I haven't changed. I still love you, Myra. Oh, darling, I thought so often how it would be to see you again to put my arms around you. Craig, please. But Myra. Well, it's just that someone might come. I. Well, someone has. Me, the man who went to prison for a murder you committed. Craig, what are you going to do? Do? Myra, don't you understand? I'm back. I'm free. Darling, we're free. Craig, don't. Don't touch me. Oh. So that's it. You're not in love with me anymore. I... I, I was when you went away. Yes, yes. You were in love with me then. When I had money, influence, when I could help you, when I could give you ten years of my life to save you. <laughs> that's pretty funny now, isn't it? What's happened to all our plans, Myra? Craig, please. I'm a star. My whole life belongs to my public. You're a phony, just like no. I've got to think of my public. I can't tie myself down to... To an old man? Why don't you say it, Myra? Say it. Say it! Please, Craig. So you're going to let me walk out of here? You're going to thank me for ten years, pat my hand, and let me walk out? I'll see that you're taken care of. You'll have everything you need. Everything I need. You're paying me off, huh? What's the matter, Myra? Your conscience bothering you? Or is it the knife? You... You have it? No, no, it's still hidden. With a note, Myra, a note that tells all about how Norma was killed. A note? Where, Craig, where? It will look at you out of blind eyes, Myra. Like the girl in the Ibsen play, a land creature who can no longer find her way back again to the sea. Tell me, tell me. I think I'd better go. No. Wait, please, Craig. Goodbye, Myra. Craig!
There's no point in going after him, is there, Myra? Craig will never tell you where he's hidden the knife. And now there's the little matter of a note, too. A note that will brand you as a murderess. A quarter of an hour later, you walk back out on the set, seemingly calm. But inside you, the cold hand of fear clutches at your heart. The cameras roll again. There are takes and retakes, scene after scene. You keep fumbling your lines. You can't concentrate. You can't get Craig off your mind. Finally, late that evening, you drive home. Spend a sleepless night thinking about Craig, wondering what he'll do. Then the following morning, while you're having breakfast, a visitor arrives. Miss Myra? What is it, Ella? There's a gentleman to see you. A Lieutenant Perez. Police department. <coughs> Police? Uh, have him come in, Ella. This way, sir. Morning, Miss Cartwright. Sorry to disturb you, but this is rather important. It's quite all right, Lieutenant. I'd like to ask you a few questions about Craig Douglas. What, um, what about him? We found a coat identified as his at the end of Paradise Pier this morning. Out by that old cafe he used to own, built like a ship. What? We believe, Miss Cartwright, he may have committed suicide. The years have rolled by since that morning when Lieutenant Perez of the Los Angeles Police made his call. Five more years, Myra, but the shadow has remained. Craig's body was never found, and there was no proof that he was really dead. Of course, as the lieutenant had explained, the tides under the old pier were swift and treacherous. Yes, Myra, as treacherous as the knife Craig had hidden. The knife and the note that no one found, unless someone should find them today. For now, it's 1948. Five years have passed since Craig's coat was found on the pier. You've had a long time to think about it, haven't you, Myra? But your thoughts have brought you nothing. Until this morning, when the newspaper told you of the auction at the Lady of the Sea Cafe. Then it hits you. That's where Craig hid the knife and the note. Somewhere in his beloved Lady of the Sea Cafe. As you hurry up the gangplank to the auction, you're quite certain that Craig has hidden them somewhere on board ship. Oh. Uh, carefully, ma'am. What? These old boards ain't as smooth as they used to be. No, sir. I remember in the old days... What do you know about the old days? Well, plenty, man. Used to run a sightseeing boat right off this pier in the late 20s. Yep. <laughs> the lady's taken quite a buffeting since those days. Face cracked wide open now. What are you talking about? The lady. <laughs> That's what I call the figurehead. The carved woman up there on the prow of the ship used to set my sights on her in the old days. Oh, the figurehead, yes. You were uh, going to the auction? Yes, where... Well... Over there, the dining solo, that way. Ain't much interested in what's going on myself. I'm just waiting till they get round to her. The lady up there. Gonna get her, too. What you figure on bidding for, ma'am? I don't know. Perhaps for my life. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, here's an important announcement for you folks who play Contract Bridge and those of you who would like to learn the game. A complete course of instruction in Contract Bridge divided into six easy lessons, is now yours for the asking at all Signal service stations. These bridge lessons were prepared especially for Signal Oil Company by that famous bridge expert Robert Lee Johnson, of whom Ely Culbertson says, no one is better qualified to prepare a series of lessons on contract bridge than my good friend and associate Robert Lee Johnson. I am glad to recommend these Signal bridge lessons to all who are interested in learning bridge or in improving their game. You see, friends, Mr. Johnson's style is so simple and understandable that even beginners can learn the game in these six easy lessons. And advanced players will especially enjoy the challenging quiz at the end of each lesson. The first lesson is at your signal dealers now, and there'll be a new lesson each week for the next six weeks. So drive into your signal service station tonight or tomorrow and ask for your free copy of Contract Bridge in six easy lessons. And now back to the whistler.
Yes, Myra. As you sit in the dining salon of the old ship-like cafe, listening to the drone of the auctioneer's voice, you realize that you're about to bid for your life, aren't you? You stare at the jumble of furnishings from the cafe, but there's nothing, nothing that would hide a knife for 15 years. As each item goes under the block, you watch carefully, train your memory for some clue. 85 what? 85 twice. Sold for 85. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to lot number eight. You will find a full description of each item in your... The auction is almost over, isn't it, Myra? Frantically, you glance around the room at the remaining articles. And as you do, you catch sight of the old man you met on deck. The old sailor who is going to bid on the carved figurehead. And then suddenly, Craig's words come back to you. It will look at you out of blind eyes. Yes, blind eyes. That's it, isn't it, Myra? The lady carved out of wood on the prow of the ship. Quickly, you hurry out to the deserted deck, up to the figurehead. You slip around the narrow passageway, stand for a moment, looking up at the carved figure, the cracked face. Quickly, you climb on the rickety wooden railing. Pull yourself up until you reach the carved face. Lady! Lady! What are you doing up there? It's got to be here. It must be. It must be in here. Lady, better be careful. Left railing. If I could just get my hand inside. Oh, man, I... the railing is splitting. <laughs> Look out! <laughs> You say you saw it happen, old timer? That's right, officer. I was standing right here when the rail gave way, and she fell down there. You uh, find her body yet? No, we won't for a while anyway. Have you any idea what the woman was up to? Nope. Seemed to be trying to get her arm through a crack in the figurehead. Then the uh, rail gave way. Uh Uh-huh. About this note, you say it was inside the figurehead? Must have been. When the lady fell... Part of the figurehead went down there in the water with her. I was standing here when this piece of paper fell to the deck. Huh. Dear Myra, I think you should know that I threw the knife into the sea on the night Norma died. I think you should know, too, that she was still alive when I carried her out of your apartment. I had to finish the job. Clear, ain't it, officer? Now, that other writing there, the bottom of the page... Can't figure that out either. Sounds like it's from a play or something. You mean this? Yeah, right there. For you are mine, and mine you shall remain, and you shall follow me. If I should come back and fetch you as a drowned man from the dark sea. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Joan Banks and William Conrad. The Whistler story was written by Esther McCoy, with music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, at this same time next Wednesday, another strange tale by The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>